the commandant of the Atlantic Sea, captain of the East Coast, your premier puffer right now, Hungry Box. Oh, he whistled it! Wow! Whistled it into it! it. Up smash kick! Unbelievable! That is something you don't see every day. Damn, in the back of the head. That is rude. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Directional Influence, episode 28. I am Rapture. This is the VVV Gaming's Directional Influence, the only Smash Bros. podcast worth listening to, if any, because I'm pretty sure we're the only one anymore. Anyway, um, I'm Rapture, as I said, and with me here tonight, we got some very special guests, but of course, my one and only favorite co host ever. Oh, by the way, shout outs to Will. He's having a birthday tonight. So, um, yes, it is yes. Will's birthday this evening. Oh, and speaking of which, there is Matt. How you doing, bro? I am doing just dandy this evening. Cool. So this is episode 28, and we have three special guests on here for you guys tonight. Matt, can you introduce our special guest for me? Uh, well, here with us tonight, we do indeed have three very special people. We have Chibo Senpai. Yo, what's going on? And we have also with us Junebug. Hey. Okay, and we also <laughs> have we also have Inui joining us this evening. What's good, yo? All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, clearly, we have. <laughs> <laughs> what do we, we got going on tonight? We have a we have a pretty sick show for you guys tonight. So stay tuned. Yes. All right. We should probably say what it is, though. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys what it is before you stay tuned. Because first off, we're talking about Cat Five or Cot Five. Yeah, it's Clash Cot, not Cat. Clash of the Titans Five. So Chivo's here to talk to us about that. Then, then. We're talking to Junebug because he's awesome. We're going to hear some stuff from him, the one and only. And then after that, we have, um, oh, the rule set stuff. Remember how last week, you know, we had Alpha Zeladon talking about the rule set, and then that rule set came up. We're like, wow, look at that rule set. Oh, my God, so much rule set. Shit got heated. Shit got heated, but it's going to get even more heated right here because Inui and Chibo are in the same episode, and they're going to go at it, talk some shit. Maybe, and then Jungle will be like, hey, what's up? And then we're going to talk in there, and it's me all hype. So, Matt, what should people do? I guess they should just get hype with us, Dakota. Definitely, they should. So, tune the fuck in. So, everybody, we have a very special guest, the one and only Ledge Grabber, the Rob main himself, Chibo. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So we got that VVV rep in here. When was the last time you were in here, Chibo? Last time I was in here for, uh, I forget the exact episode number, but it was talking about the uh, the Vegas drama. What oh, yes, 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 yes. Correct, correct. So it's been a while. It's been, definitely been a while. And uh, Chibo, uh, can you tell us a little bit about why you are here tonight? I am here to talk about the one, the only, Clash of the Titans 5. Uh, Clash of the Titans 5 is the sequel to, you guessed it, Clash of the Titans 4, which, uh, remember it or not, was the very first Brawl National. So, I mean, think about our like today's tournament scene. We're having nationals every month, every other month, all the time. We've had MLG, we've had our Pounds, our Apexes. COT4 was the first Brawl National, and here's the first sequel to that event. Awesome, awesome. So where is that event going down? COT5. We'll be going down in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is a really great location for national events. It's directly in the center of Atlantic North. It's right next to uh, Philadelphia International Airport. So anybody from outside America that wants to come on in, uh, fly in easily to our airport. Uh, you can fly from other parts of the country. You can take public transportation in. There's lots of buses they can use for cheap. It's really a great hub of transportation and a great location with tons of historic places for people to visit outside of the tournament as well. That sounds hype. I'm going to definitely check out those historical places. And uh, for those of you who went to COT4, um, I personally went to COT4. I had a shitload of fun. It was A shitload. It was indeed Not even a load, a shitload. 
it was a, a shitload of fun. Uh, I mean, me and Kieran, we had to find our own way there, and uh, we we managed to hitch a ride with uh, Nightmare and C4 last minute, and we made our way to to COT4, and it was definitely one of the best experiences I'd have to say of my Smash career. Just seeing everybody there, getting hype. It was it, it was definitely something to remember, especially since it was Ally's first tournament in America. Uh, he made his debut there. So uh, if you guys were at COD 4, there's absolutely no reason for you to even think about not going to COD 5. But if you missed COD 4, then this is your opportunity to relive the hype. And here's hoping that D1 does the money back dance again. Oh, I've seen the money back then so many times since then. It's pretty much just a basic staple at tournaments nowadays. But to really see it at a Clash of Titans is really unlike anything else. I mean, COT4 brought us... Uh, I mean, it's actually Ally's second tournament, uh, PD, not his first. The, his first was Cataclysm 4, oh, which is yeah. only about two weeks before COT4. But, I mean, it was only about 40 people or so. The only really hype matches we got out of that was Ally versus DM Brandon and Mewtwo King. But COT4 had all in the same building. Players like Ally, Mewtwo King, Dojo, uh, Hylian, a uh, bunch of Midwest hits like Lane, uh, Alpha Zealot. I mean, I uh, I could go on forever. We had, just we had names people. like like Jash and Ninja Link rep in New York. Yeah, a lot of people you don't really see nowadays in today's tournaments. And like Jash, you don't see as as often as more. Uh, Ninja Link uh, is he's really not up to his past prime. I mean, back then, if you look at the results for this, the results are just classic. You also have people that have quit the scene like Andy G. Vex got like top ten or something like crazy like that. I mean, everybody was really at their peak like in a professional scene at that, at that time relive it yeah and speaking of which i mean obviously newer players like myself or people who haven't been to the tournament you know the tournament series before like myself uh I, you know obviously there are a lot of people like that are obviously hyped about it because of what it offers but for people who have been to it beforehand uh what has like changed what's different what's new for them to look forward to the first and most important thing above all else is we all know the problems that happen at COT4, the money back dance, the venue closed a little bit earlier than expected. First of all thing, I just want to make sure all of those problems are fixed. That's my main concern above all else. Uh, for instance, that even though it is the same venue, I've guaranteed it in contract that the venue will be open until 2 a.m. both nights just in case we need time. Although even though it won't be that much of a problem uh, because Brawl just naturally runs faster these days being two years later. In terms of signups, we're not going to have a long six-hour sign-up period just having two people sitting at a desk. We have online registration going now. We already have people signed up, more people signing up. Uh, we actually have somebody from every single region currently of the U.S. and Canada currently coming to the event, which is going to be great. And instead of just making tons and tons of promises, I'm not going to do Smash 64. I'm not going to do Brawl Plus. You know, I mean, they're all fine and awesome. This isn't the place for them. This is for mainly Brawl singles, Brawl doubles. And, of course, but there's also going to be all, like tons of other like, great fun things that are going to uh, go on. Uh, for instance, Kitar is kind of organizing, a, uh, a, as we're calling it, the Cheese Steak March uh, Saturday night. So, actually, I just want to throw uh, real quick, this is a two-day tournament, not a three-day. So for people that kind of just want to like condense this into their weekend, they don't have to spend so much money on multiple hotel nights. It's just a two-day event because we're only running one game. It can easily be done. So Saturday night, uh, the first night of the, t of the tournament, after uh, everything is over for the day, Guitaro and I are going to be taking as many people as, as that want to come, so probably maybe around 50 or 60, and we're all going to march down uh, the street uh, of Philadelphia walking to a classic Philadelphia cheesesteak joint because everybody hears about Philly cheesesteaks. And sure, you can go order them in California, Florida, but they're just not the same. And really, almost emulating uh, at the end of COT4, the, uh, the angry mob that we had, we're going to kind of emulate that, bringing it to a cheesesteak joint, rolling up at 1 in the morning. We already have the place picked out. It's a great place. Uh, whenever I house people here in Philadelphia, I always take them there. They always love it. So I really think people that are uh, far away from Philadelphia that don't travel here often are really going to enjoy things like that. And then also other things outside the tournament. Uh, when when I uh, mentioned historic locations, probably everybody's uh, – most excited one that they talk about is it's less historic value and more awesome factor is the legendary steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum that are featured in the movie Rocky are literally within walking distance of the venue and my apartment. So it's a great thing to go check out while you're here. Uh, I got to say, if there's one reason you should go to COT5, it's the Philly cheesesteaks because that was probably the one of the most amazing things about <laughs> about yes. getting all the way to PA is that 
I've had Philly cheesesteaks before, and there's nothing like it's, it. there's absolutely nothing like a real legitimate. They just Philly don't compare to anything yeah. else. They I really mean, don't. When I when I played hockey down in PA once, uh, I, I there was this one time I was playing in a tournament and I played goalie, and I played the entire tournament. And one time, you know, one of the games in the tournament, my coach said, "You know what? You're gonna you're not play today. We need the other backup goalie, who's like this little kid who nobody gives a shit about, to go play because we're gonna rape." I have a Philly cheesesteak, which I thought was just gonna run through me, and I was gonna have like, you know, explosive diarrhea everywhere because they're so good, but they they, they kill me. But then all of a sudden, I get put in somehow, and the Philly cheesesteak makes me give that shutout, 56 save. You know, game up there. I was like, damn, I was just raping. It was yeah, great. So you've heard rumors about eating making you play worse, but it makes you play better. You a Philly cheese Not steak, a Philly statistically, cheese. that is <laughs> statistically. Cram it down. <laughs> I have the statistics right there. Just get you out there. Eat the most Philly cheese. You really steak. should. Like it, 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 breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Wizwit. <laughs> yes, Wizwit. Wizwit. I, I remember go that. I remember you. that. I remember that. In Philadelphia, right. if you order a cheese steak wrong, they will not serve you. <laughs> Wow. So, uh, Chivo, anything else you would like to tell us about COT 5? Well, I guess I just want to wrap up and really talk about the registration because now that all of you listening know about the event, how are you going to go to the event? Uh, So uh, even though signing up at the door was very popular last time, perhaps a little too popular, I have options for both signing up online and in person. Uh, Currently, uh, online registration has been going for about two to three weeks now. We're up to, I believe, 35 registered attendees. Uh, Pretty much, if you just log on to cot5.vgbootcamp.com, it's a very very easy URL to remember. Uh, You just go to the registration page. Uh, You can sign up using PayPal, credit card, debit card. If you don't have a credit or debit card, you can go to uh, your local a uh, drugstore of some kind, and you can buy like an, uh, an American Express prepaid card, which will work. Uh, prices are as follows. It's $15 for singles because it's a national tournament, so you want to really get more money to the pot for the players. Doubles is 10 per person, so it's $20 per team. When you register, you just have to uh, say, like, just pay your half of the doubles. You don't have to pay for the whole team. And then venue fee fluctuates based on what the current date is. Uh, currently for the month of April, which is most likely what it would be when you're listening to the podcast, the venue fee is $20, which is really a lot cheaper than most tournaments uh, spend $30 per venue fee for a national. However, starting on May 1st, the venue fee will increase to $30. So it's really the incentive to sign up early. And the more people we sign up early, it kind of creates like a steamroll effect where more and more people be signing up, get to better tournaments. So there's really nothing wrong about that. Uh, so basically... Log on to the site, check it out, see who's coming. Uh, you can sign up yourself. Earlier you sign up, the more money you save, the more hype that builds, better the tournament. Get Definitely. Hype. Get that steamroll effect going. So that was COT5. I hope you guys all sign up. I'll be there. Matt, I'm sure you'll be there. I hope everybody Indeed. else here is there. No, DI will be there. DI will be there. DI has to be everywhere because we got that steamroll effect. That's a, that's a great uh, phrase there, by the way, Chibo. Anyway, so uh, thanks for letting us know. I hope you guys all check out COT5. That's uh, COT5.VGBootCamp.com where you guys can register, check out all that stuff, and just make sure that you do so because DI will be there and we're talking about it. So it's awesome. All right, guys, so uh, we just had Chibo getting us hyped about COP5, but uh, right now we have a very another very special guest I introduced earlier. Uh, we have the one and only Lucario main Junebug in the house. So, Junebug, what's up, dude? Nothing much, just chilling. <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously. Um, uh, so, Junebug, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself for those who have been living under a rock for the past three and a half years? Hmm, I, I, I'm not that prepared compared to Chibo, but, uh, I mean, I'll try. I mean... Chibo's body is forever ready. <laughs> wow. Uh, my first tournament was in November 08. I got 33rd, which, I, I mean, it's first tournament. And I lost to... I still remember who I lost to, actually. I lost to Omni, who's still playing, and uh, it's this guy named Turbo, a DDD player. And I, but I I pulled up some upset I think and it was it was really cool like I didn't expect to beat anyone because it was my first tournament but it was um it was an interesting experience and I guess ever since then I've been going and I 
gradually gotten better, and I guess now I'm where I am now. Yeah, I mean, um, definitely you busted out into the scene, and everybody was like, oh my god, Lucario, because, I mean, there were there have never been that many Lucario mains. Um, so, uh, how do you think, or do you think, that you, yourself, or who else has propelled Lucario's metagame? Of course, Asin propelled it more than anyone else has, because, I mean, he, he invented the Luc- Lucario. I'm mad he doesn't play anymore, but it is what it is. Lee Martin, of course, he doesn't play anymore either, which also sucks. And then there's the more modern Zuko doesn't play anymore. Uh, they, they, all, they all left. But right now, holding it down, it's kind of just me and Trella. Trying to, you know, make our character better. But Trello seems to be doing most of the cool stuff. I, I just kind of camp and read. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess so. So, um, would you say that you're better than Trello? Or would would you would you put you two on the same, you know, the same field? Or? I, I don't want to answer that question. It's oh. too much... Too, oh, much yeah. too much don't arguments. Too much arguments. start any hate. No, that's, that's, that's cool. That's respectable. Um... So, you've obviously had a lot of hype matches in your history, but the most memorable one, at least in my mind, is you versus Larry. Uh, I mean, at MLG, all this hype already, and we have Junebug, the resident Lucario, versus Larry coming all the way from the West Coast. And I mean, you were kind of an underdog, that uh, that set, so what? just tell us a little bit about that set. Well, as soon as I heard the match being called, I was like, oh, dang it. And um, I asked Lee for some tips versus Falco. And I, I played Lee's Falco a lot before um, I played Larry. And that really helped because Lee and K Sizzle, actually, I played both their Falcos. And I learned, like, stuff you could do against Falco. And that really helped in the long run. I mean, Larry, like, Larry told me, like, I think on Saturday, the day after, um, that he had no prior Lucario experience. So the fact that I had Falco experience, like a mere 30 minutes before playing Larry, it, it really helped. And then first match, I was I was getting wrecked. Uh, Lucario factor nearly pulled it out for me, but I, I think I lost pretty solidly. I'm not I'm not sure. Second match. Um, it was, I had the lead the entire game, but Larry, being Larry, just uh, came back and took it to last hit. I, I got a lucky forward smash in him, game two. And, and game three, game three was, yeah, I can't really describe game three. Um, Yeah, just go watch game three. Yeah, I mean, just watching game three, you can kind of just feel it. I mean, I was there in the venue watching it, and I just remember just... <laughs> seeing these two players just sitting up there, just, like, clearly one of the most intense sets I've ever watched in my life. I mean, that that last game alone was, like, the hype wave it was pretty great. So, I mean, if you guys can't feel the hype and the, the emotion coming out of that last game, then, I, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you can hear the crowd in the background, too. I mean, that's... Why are you playing Smash? I mean, I, I don't think Junebug has to explain himself for that third game so Junebug you're ranked in MDVA clearly so um where do you put yourself among other players in the country like do, do you think that you're like top 10 material top 20 material so okay. sort of put a number to it if you can uh, I, I feel like I always underperform at nationals uh MLG DC I got 17th I lost two really close sets to Anti and Felix I took both of them third game last hit. I was really disappointed that I couldn't pull it off. I hate losing close sets, you know, because there's always that like thing in the back of your head, like what, what, what if I won? Like, but I try not to think about that stuff. Just focus on the future, you know. But mm, I'd say top fifty <laughs> in the country, I guess. I'm not sure. Oh, well, that's a solid <laughs> estimate. I mean, that's a good good enough answer as it is. Um, so, obviously, as you said, all the other Lucarios pretty much quit. But, uh, however, there are, at least to my knowledge, uh, a lot of Lucarios who 
haven't quite stepped it up yet. I mean, I've noticed some names like uh, Steam, I think, is from Colorado. There's Stoffy, mm-hmm. Stoffy on the West Coast. Um, do you have any advice for even players below them, Lucario players, that might help propel your, your character towards the top more? Just, like, when, when I was getting better, I just watched videos and saw what top players were doing that I wasn't doing. Especially like Asin and Lee Martin, of course. You couldn't really watch them now because the metagame has changed so much. But just just watch videos, like apply things that you see top players do to your playstyle. Um, learn how to read players. Learn to adapt to patterns. That really helps. Uh, I think one of the reasons I'm I'm kind of dominating. Well, I wouldn't say dominating, but uh, I'm doing pretty well in MDVA right now. Is because I'm I'm adapting to the players like pretty easily. Um, but then again, this, we I've had some really close sets, and uh, of course, Coney Coney isn't showing up to any tournament I go to, and he runs away when I ask to money match him. Coney, it's an inside joke between the call me and out. Coney. The call out. <laughs> no, Coney's a cool guy. I mean, but. Oh, we, uh, all we, have this, here. <laughs> we have this uh, rec- recurrent joke that uh, Coney will never money match me. He, he, will, uh, he will money match everybody else. But when I say, hey, hey, Coney, you, you want a money match? He'll be like, oh, dip. And yeah, Coney won't money match me. And I, I've only played Coney once in tournament. And then, yeah, Coney beat me pretty uh, we, we won't talk about that, but yeah, Coney B. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think is the best teammate for, for Lucario, or the best teammates? Hmm. Meta Knight, of course. Uh, Wario. I love teaming with Malcolm. Hopefully I'll team with him at Cot 5, but I don't know yet. Um, Game & Watch is good, too. Basically, any character... Lucario can team with any character that just doesn't die. Uh, I remember I teamed with Hyro at pound um, pound four, and we were doing really well when Hyro just avoided everything and threw bombs. And I think Jeremy Trella did something similar to that in at pound five. So any character that can tank well or camp that like Lucario does well with. All right, and would you say that Lucario excels more in doubles than he does in singles? I mean, I'm I'm not that much of a doubles player because I tend doing, to. Doing, I can honestly tell you, Lucario is significantly better in doubles. Yeah, I guess he's better because Inui, Probably the doubles the, god, says so. Doubles. Probably god. The, yeah. I think he's the fourth best character in the Pretty good. Uh, fourth best. All right. Well, um, last question: Oatmeal raisin or chocolate chip? Ah, uh, I like macadamia nut. Oh, macadamia oh, nuts, so strong. All right, well, um, thanks a lot for, for giving us this interview, Junebug, and uh, obviously Welcome. you'll stick around for the uh, the next discussion. Yeah, yeah. So, everybody, obviously last week's hype was the Unity rule set release, and obviously that is a big deal in the Brawl community. So we have here tonight, obviously, all of our three guests two of which are on completely different sides of this debate in Yui and Shibo. And then Junebug is here for good measure. And Matt's here still. I don't know why. But, um, um, so I guess uh, who wants to – well, Junebug, you know what? Since since you're here and you're sort of neutral on this or a little balanced compared to Inui and Shibo here, why don't you give us your opinion on the Unity rule set? Hmm, uh, I think the ledge grab limit is I, – I mean – I think normal characters deserve to have a ledge grab, ledge grab limit after seeing what Will did at Wobo. I love Will, but that was kind of lame. But um, I, I think the infinites thing is... Mm, I don't really agree with it. Basically, mostly because I, I have so many friends that play like DK, Luigi, characters that are like severely hindered by day-to-day infinites and like i, I wouldn't want to see boss lose to random ddd 99 just because infinites are legal at cot 5 
I'm not saying Boss is going to Cop 5, but, yeah, you know, mm, the stages, hmm, I heard Picto Chat's a good <laughs> Lucario stage, but uh, I'm more of a neutral. I, I kind of pick a lot of neutrals, so I wouldn't know. I don't like Brinstar and Rainbow Cruise because it favors Meta Knight a lot, but I I can't ask for everything. Um, yeah, that's my two cents. Very fair, very balanced. So let's start over here with Chiba. I guess you can give us a little start on this. So I guess give us your side on this rule set thing. What do you like about it? What do you don't like about it? Et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm talking about. Well, I think I guess I'll start it out with um, what I really want to push is like the, the name itself is Unity. The Unity rule set. It's all about various tiers coming together and collaborating to kind of make a rule set that we can all kind of compromise between. It's not just one or two people from a single region just trying to really take over and organize this. A lot of people have blamed Alpha Zell for kind of just like kind of ruling it with an iron fist, uh, making the rule set that he wants kind of like how MLG might have been a little awkward with some of the stages that were allowed. But I mean, with Unity, I can just show you uh, like from my perspective, uh, I'm going to pull up the Unity rule set now so I can look at it. And I'm going to tell you what kind of things that I personally disagree with or like the rules that I voted against, actually. Uh, one of them was the ledge grab limit, obviously. I mean, people know that I love grabbing the ledge as much as it isn't true for the 2011 model of Rob, which is all aggro. Uh, I actually believe that overall it's probably most beneficial to just have no ledge grab limit at all. Not, uh, none for Meta Knight, no for other characters. However, if there had to be one, I I'd be for a uh, ledge grab limit for Mennite only compared to other characters. People can bring up what Will did to Rich Brown at Wobo, but I mean, let's look at the facts here. This is a one time thing to happen here. We haven't seen DK. Uh, plank to death anybody else and there are options to beat it i mean if you were reading the thread just after it happened uh gamer was like can't all of our f smash uh dk out of that and then when the video finally got online i'm watching it and pretty much probably about maybe 15 to 20 ledge grabs into it so still really early in the match rich brown actually f smashed will out of the up b spam but then he just stopped doing it for no reason at all and later on in the match he was actually able to steal the ledge from him multiple times but then just didn't follow up. I mean, sure, it does put the opponent in a sort of a shaky position, especially if you're Almar, who's very weak off the stage. But, I mean, that's how matchups go. Uh, in terms of other rules, uh, let me think here. In terms of infinites, I agree with that. Uh, sudden death, I agree with that. In terms of the stage list, uh, I personally see no problem with it. Uh, when I went into the BBR RC, I was a little shaky on Pokemon Stadium 2 after that's been debated a lot in Atlantic North, but uh, after discussing it, I found that uh, I'm personally fine with it being on the stage list. And even with DM's uh, round table of TOs that happened a few days ago, we all decided that Stadium 2 should be legal. Uh, Picto Chat, I'm a supporter of, but I'm sure you guys will all get to hear my case on that once Inoue starts raging at the microphone about how much he hates that stage. Uh, <laughs> in terms of other things, I mean, like what it's showing is that, like, especially with the Les Gremlin, which is probably the biggest thing that I was against, or like the biggest change compared to my own personal rule set, I'm willing to give this up in exchange for... Uh, accepting rules from other regions, uh, other TOs, because we all have to remind ourselves that when we host a tournament, we're not the only people hosting tournaments in the entire world. We're all playing the same game. We all have different thoughts and ideals. That's why they're called opinions and not facts. As much as you might want to argue that Picture Chat isn't uh, competitive, that's still an opinion because the word competitive, we don't have a, like an exact definition for. So that's where I come on up from now. And uh, so let's continue on with with this debate. Okay. Uh, probably we should start with the de definition of competitive. The fact that the PRRC didn't come up with the definition for competitive that people can agree on is the first major flaw. It's a big mistake that you guys made because it makes stages like PS2 and Pixel Chat become very debatable. And you could have just ended the debate by having a definition for competitive. And I want to start about Picto Chat because I despise Picto Chat. I've never made it legal at any of my tournaments and never will. I, I think Bridge of Elden and Shadow Moses Island are honestly more competitive than that stage because they don't have random occurrences that can take your stocks, like a line appearing and just killing you. And it just kills me to see that stage decide who wins instead of the players. 
So, like, at, at Wobo, it was Dojo versus Will on that stage. And they were going very even. It looked like a good match. And it was on the live stream. And then Will was just recovering. It wasn't like he was planking or anything. The line just showed up and killed him at 70%. And DK dies at more than double that damage to him on that stage. And then Dojo just proceeded to time him out with the yeah, so people saw that was the best DK. There was no hype for it after that. It just destroyed the set for everyone watching, and Will and everyone. Dojo did not have fun. It was just awful. And I don't see why that experience should just be repeated for players and people watching. It just, no one wants to see grand finals end with, like, the line appearing and gimping someone. Like, nobody wants to see that. Just get rid of it. There's, there's that, that uh, announcement post on All This Brawl that, that Alpha Zilot made. Uh, Mike Ray, whose name is Adam Gibson on the site, posted some really good videos because uh, him and Biscuit really opposed that stage and made videos against it. And it just, after watching those videos, I really don't get how anyone can still support that stage after seeing what can happen just out of complete randomness. There's no player control or anything. I just don't agree with it. As for infinites, uh, bum. Do you mind if I uh, do you mind if I actually respond oh. to your uh, your pick the chat oh, yeah. argument first before we move on, just to kind of keep things organized? Sure, sure, that's fine. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to start out with. Uh, first, <clears throat> uh, the stageless part of the BBR RC rule, or I'm sorry, the Unity rule set was actually decided upon uh, before uh, all the TOs were in there. So it was the original base of TOs that was in there. So Alpha uh, Zealot, uh, Alex Drive. Who else was there? Uh, I think I don't think Guitar was an original one. He might have not. I actually was not an original member. Uh, there might have been a, a Midwest one, a West Coast one, but they were the ones that uh, decided the original stage was. So after we came in, uh, we actually didn't discuss this right now. However, now that the rule sets out, we're open to changing it constantly. Pick the chat is being discussed right now, so you might actually be seeing it taken off the Unity rule set, which is really good about this rule set. Is that it's constantly changing. It's a live document meaning it's always alive, so to say. Anything of it can change at any time's moment. If we see a problem in the tournament, we can fix the rule set right away. Uh, but first thing I want to say, or, or first thing after the first thing I want to say, was that uh, your discussion about det- or defining the term competitive uh, was definitely a great point, which I agree with. However, even attempting to define such a word, it's still an opinion that every single person can hold differently, and putting it into words can be almost near impossible in a way. It's more of an ideal per se, not just a definition. But now how that can affect Picta chat, a lot of people are starting to be more against it. In fact, I'm almost feeling I'm one of the very few people that are uh, still in favor of it. Uh, I've written up a few posts about it, uh, and I've also actually gotten to see uh, some of the videos that BizKit released. But I mean... To be honest, I really didn't see anything wrong with the videos. Uh, half of the videos were literally just BizKit or somebody playing with computer players, just, <coughs> which were completely mindless, hardly doing anything. And in some of the situations, the transformations actually saved the characters instead of hurting them. And I'm talking like a missile transformation actually saved the character instead of killing them, which so many people assume in that sense. Uh, so me, any- yeah, like the fact that stage save them or kill them. The fact that the stage can do that at random is a big problem. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so it saves them. But... Well, I mean, Yoshi's also- Island, the, the platform ghost can save you, and that can certainly be game-changing. I've definitely... Yeah. Uh, I've seen people spike I, I, I characters that. down into that. But, I've spiked characters down into it. And then they live and they come back to win the game. So, if Picta Chat should be banned from the same logic, shouldn't... At least, maybe Yoshi's be counter I don't know how you but, should... I, uh, that's a that's a valid argument, but like the way I view it is like you have to ban what's like within reason, and like Pixel Chat has like a lot more severe issues than Yoshi's, and I'm willing to bet that if you play it on Yoshi's and Pixel Chat an even amount of time, you're gonna see a lot more luck based life saving and killing and etc. on Pixel Chat. By I can agree with that. So it's like. Trying to apply DDD's Gordos or something, it's clearly not reasonable to ban DDD's side B because he could throw out a Gordo. Uh, but, like, it's very reasonable to just get rid of Pixel Chat. It's a very popular idea at, the time, at, at this time. So, I really hope that the DBRRC actually gets rid of it. 
because I already told Alpha Zila, if that stage is gone, I will I will try the rule set at my own tournaments, even though there's a lot of other parts I disagree with. It's just Picto Chat is an absolute deal breaker for me because I despise that stage. Okay, and um, some of the points I want to make that uh, are why I'm for the stage is that really the only part of the transformation I've seen that is just a complete deal breaker for me to so to say, but it happens so rarely that it's not enough for me to make her think that it's bad is uh, see whenever a transformation is being drawn and the animation plays. Uh, the hurt boxes aren't actually active until the drawing is complete. So you still have a couple, like probably one to two seconds, which is actually a lot in Smash terms when you're reacting on frame-wise things. Uh, the hurt boxes aren't active until the end of the animation. However, for the one transformation about the spikes on the sides uh, during the drawing animation, so with completely no warning whatsoever, uh, the spikes are temporarily replaced with just a giant wall. And if the wall appears on top of you as you're going through it, which you can see in Biscuit's video probably three times or so, it'll just stay spiky downwards. And while it won't kill you at almost any percent, I believe, it puts you in an absolutely terrible position, which is by far the worst thing I've seen this stage. However, uh, I really don't think everybody out there knows how to play the stage properly. Uh, it's a counterpick stage, meaning that it favors some characters and potentially hurts others. It's not really neutral in nature, and some previous knowledge is needed to play on it properly. The stage rewards characters with versatile recoveries and mobility that can adapt to different situations, good at forcing their opponents into fewer situations, that have strong moves that can be comboed into that wouldn't otherwise be hit often, uh, and characters that aren't normally as good as approaching. And it hurts characters that are somewhat uh, lighter and ones that have restricted recoveries, such as Donkey Kong, as you brought up with the line Killing Will at, uh, at Wobo. Uh, in order to play the stage correctly, one should be wary of approximately when transformations should appear, know every transformation and how to use them each to your advantage, know how to limit your opponent's options, uh, be able to react quickly and DI surprise attacks appropriately. Uh, you really need to know patience because constantly rushing in might not always be a good tactic, uh, keeping it steady and observing the stage along with your opponent. Uh, no other tricks that are uh, present that some may overlook uh, since they are busy with dealing with the transformations, such as even though things like the line can hurt Donkey Kong, the way the ledges are designed, similar to Yoshi's Island, he can do his invincible up B, kind of, I don't know if it's a glitch or just a cool maneuver, which is, I'm sure you can see it uh, in the Will versus Witch Brown match, is a very popular thing that DK does. And also, uh, really, you have to know risk assessment and know by doing certain options, there are positives and negatives that can happen. Uh, like, for instance, before you recover with Pikachu's over B in the middle of the stage, you should first determine if it's worth the risk to doing it with the spikes and missiles coming up if they haven't appeared so already. And if you think it's not worth it, recover a different way. So it kind of, if your opponent puts you in a situation where you have to recover a different way, it's almost rewarding them in a way. And when I say that if the transformation has appeared yet, once a transformation appears in a match in Picto Chat, you will not see it again because it has to go through all 27 or 28 transformations before it restarts the cycle. And in an eight minute match, I believe you only see about 16 to 18 of those transformations, so you'll never see one more than once. And in terms of why I like to counterpick, or I'll just kind of cut it short. But yeah. yeah you're, you're going on. Honestly, that was probably the best argument I've ever heard for a Picto Chat the entire time I've been playing Smash, so congratulations on that. You almost made I try. Game. Almost, but I still hate to see it. Almost. Uh, might as well move on to something else, because honestly, we could probably debate. It's just beating a dead horse. We've right. all heard the arguments over and over. We want to keep this interesting. Yeah, so uh, um, oh, I, I want to talk, talk about, about talk about Pokemon Stadium 2. Uh, I kind of want to talk about that. Uh, I think that the that DM's meeting already covered that stage very thoroughly, and what Chibo said initially, like, a, a lot of us agreed, eh, the stage can be really silly, but, like, it's not really so ban-worthy. Honestly, maybe Atlantic North kind of banned it prematurely, myself included, but some other people to ban it quite early, because I personally dislike it, but maybe we could give the stage another shot to see what happens when people play tournament matches on it. Uh, if it gets too unpopular, then we can really answer to what the people want, which I'm obviously for that. Uh, and that's all I really have to say on PS2. Yeah, but I mean, we keep it legal. We try it out for a little bit, and if there's any problems with it, uh, the BBRRC will definitely discuss it, and if there's a problem, we'll definitely remove it. Like, we're always open to changing rules at any time. Yeah. 
that seems solid. Seems like a solid explanation. Yeah. I want to talk about the infinites thing next. Cause yeah, are... Yes, the infinites is a, is a good idea. Uh, uh, Matt, you're good friends with Will. Can you tell me that, like, what's what's Will's take on it? Is he going to, like, quit Smash? Well, I mean, honestly, Will has been really discouraged lately. Um, mainly because everybody's getting on his back about the Rich Brown thing, which, I mean, he's been really discouraged about that. Which I'm is, supporting I, him. Which is I one of the reasons. I would have done the same thing in his it's one of the reasons he, he, he told Olimar me that. Is gay. And, I mean, that's for a totally different discussion. But, I mean, he also, I mean, any tournament he's ever been to where the, le- the the infinite has been legal, I mean, he just gets really discouraged. Because, honestly, like Inui was saying before in the chat that you guys didn't see, if the infinite is legal, then Donkey Kong is honestly Ganondorf tier. Because there's no longer a longer reason. Re- God damn it, Lucas. <laughs> yeah, but there's no longer a reason. I'm coming in on your speakers. Yeah, whatever, whatever. <sighs> your mic for a second, Lucas. All right. So basically, there's no reason that anybody should lose to Donkey Kong ever. I mean, really, if you, if, if I don't know if you guys have ever tried out the Infinite, but uh. It's probably, like, the easiest thing to do in the world. It's pretty easy. It's probably the easiest thing to do in the world. And, uh, I mean, I know that some people argue, like, some people who are, like, originalists, where they, they argue, like, oh, if, it, if it's in there, then you gotta you gotta go with it. I mean, like, we're not gonna have a good game like that. I mean, if... I mean, as Verm has, has said in a lot of his blogs, and I think he might have mentioned it when he was on the show, he, uh... He... he wants people to use reason like i want them to use reason like just because something's in the game and that's your definition of competitive look at the long run look at what pretty much removing five or six characters from the game is going to do for our community like that's not a, a good thing to do when you could simply just ban it and just get rid of it altogether like to me that just makes for a healthier community and it's common sense which is something a lot of people lack these days but it's common sense uh, I'd agree with that. I mean, I would. I wouldn't want Will or Boss. Like, like I said, I wouldn't want Will or Boss to lose to random DDD player sixty nine. Cause oh, he's uh, my favorite guy. <laughs> I love that dash? dude. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just gonna chip in here a little bit or chime in, whatever. Um, I, personally, I I'm not a big fan of Infinites, you know. And personally, I think maybe the Ice Climbers should go a month without them. Like, let's see how well they do. But on a, a serious note, I, you know, as much as I feel like it's it's arbitrary to just be like, oh, well, this character is, has this ability to do this against other characters. Why take it away? Uh, I feel like it's more important to support the viability of other characters. Because, hey, let's be honest here, if it's really that easy to just, you know, pick a character and be like, alright, well, I've just completely shut down your strategy, there's no point in you trying, yeah, okay, well, that's arbitrary for us to take it away, but, like, do we really want to deal with that? And I personally don't. I'd rather play in a, a, a community that will sort of go out of its way to be like, you know what, this, as much as this isn't necessarily, like, the best thing to do technically on paper, in theory, whatever, like, let's be all honest here, we don't want to play when we're shutting down the viability of a few characters when we could be saving them, and the character that's being hurt by taking away those infinites really is still pretty well off, to be honest. Uh, uh, oh, you going, you want to talk Chiba? Hmm? No, I'm anyway, trying to, I hit my mic mute button by accident. Oh, um, I have a kind of I mean, a random point. I'm not sure. I, I still think Infinite should be banned. But um, correct me if I'm wrong. At Pound 5, were Infinite's legal? Infinites yes, they were. were legal and well lost to addicts and losers. They also were at Wobo. Okay. Um, pound 5, Noid um, beat Cheese day-to-day versus Samus on FD with Infinite's legal. I mean... Yeah, that I mean that is a good point, but I mean, if, the Noid's pretty good. Like yeah, I mean Noid's pretty good, and Cheese's DDD is pretty horrible. Like I mean, let's, let's <laughs> yeah, let, yeah, let's be honest here. Come yeah. on. Yeah, I, mean, I've seen, I doubt he beat I've, like Adamus on that stage. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so I mean, although anecdotal evidence is good in some instances, I'm gonna have to go with the fact that that might have yeah. happened. 
but I, I understand Jim Bug. Just, yeah, I mean that's a, that's a certain and, you know that's I I enjoy when people play the devil's advocate because I mean yeah. if if you think about it, there's like logically there's no well I mean well God damn it, Lucas. <laughs> In theory, there's no real reason we should ban these infinites because it's just hurting DDD and sort of, you know, altering the game, which is something we tend to be against. But I mean, if you just look at it from a common sense point of view, and I mean, the only reason we haven't banned uh, Ice Climber infinites yet is because, in my opinion, there's no way to actually tell what an Ice Climber's infinite is. I mean, they have so many different ways to do it that you can't just ban one thing unless you want to ban back throw to back throw, which is probably the only logical argument I've heard. But, I mean, uh, it, get in here, Lucas. All right. Um, I think it's very damaging to the metagame to have DDD infinite legal because they're extremely different from Ice Climber infinite. I don't think they're comparable at all. DDD has a gigantic grab range much harder to kill. There's no, like, option to just kill the secondary one and make it impossible. There's no, like, it's much harder to pull DDD via a stage. I don't think the Ice Climbers are that good. Like, if you just don't get grabbed by their little... They have, like, pathetic grab range and everything. They don't win anything, even with all their infinites. They just don't win. So, there's really no problem with them. But having D, uh, I guess, like, Bowser doesn't really matter, and... DK's doing pretty well without DDD obtaining And I don't want Will to just, like, quit Smash over this or something, because that would be very bad. Like, he's a driver on Long Island. He helps everyone else get places. He hosts stuff sometimes. It's just bad for the community for this infinite to be legal in many different ways. Elimination of Donkey Kong is fine otherwise. And certain players that are very beneficial for the community. Like, Will shouldn't be forced to just switch the character when he put three years into DK already and the best Donkey Kong. It's just really dumb. And we already changed the game so much from what it's originally uh, designed to be. Because we so, if there's a clear oversight in the programming of the game, which DD and probably are, we should just get rid of it because we can, and that's it. And there's no problem. It benefits the metagame more. There's more diversity. That's a difference. All right. So, in my talk about uh, the infinite, I'm going to be referencing the uh, the first official BBR matchup chart, which, even though it might not be the best thing to reference, and I don't agree with every single matchup on it, it's at least it's a basis to work off of, which is easy to, re- easy to reference during a podcast. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it works on a system of rating matchups from negative four to positive four, uh, going from worst matchup to best matchup, or, I mean, in difficulty and like that. So uh, this also, this matchup chart was made uh, without infinites being legal, so they were banned. Uh, looking at day-to-day versus DK, it's already a uh, it's a negative four matchup for DK, meaning it's absolutely terrible. Even without the infinite, day-to-day is quite possibly DK's worst matchup, and really only banning is just kind of like putting the hammer into the grave in that point. But what it's doing is by, like, the game's default is not banning the infinites, and honestly there isn't that much in the Unity rule set that strays away from the original game programming they can't be changed. Like things like stage selection, you can turn them off on random. You can just straight up pick a stage. I mean, I think some of the only things that uh, have been done differently compared to the game programming would be uh, banning the infinite dimensional cape and a ledge grab limit. It's pretty much some of the only things. Uh, when looking at other characters with bad matchups, uh, what about Falco here? We have an amazing character here. Uh, should he really be losing matchups to like a Pikachu that can just learn? Uh, the easy chain grab and just completely, which destroys him if done right. I mean, Falco versus Pikachu, according to the matchup chart, is negative three. So it's not quite an unwinnable matchup, but it's absolutely terrible for Falco. Should we ban the Pikachu uh, chain grab just because of this? Like, what if Def started not going to tournaments if we started seeing a, a, a rise of Pikachus doing this, learning it, and constantly beating him with this character? What would Def do? He would likely pick up a secondary. So even though Will is the best DK, we all love him for being DK. 
there's really nothing stopping him from picking up a secondary. And a lot of people, I'm sure, you know, you've, you've said this yourself, day-to-day is not uh, – what's the term I'm, I'm looking for? A viable character. It's the fact that he loses so many other matchups terribly. He loses the Ice Climbers massively. He loses the Olimar, oh. Pikachu, Meta Knight, Diddy, Falco. Uh, Falco. Uh, Falco. Wait, I think I'm getting I- some – some reverb in the microphone. In the microphone. And you mute mi- mute your mic until you're actually going to talk, please. Thank you. Anyway, uh, so the fact that, like, if why should we pr- add a rule to prevent DK from picking a secondary if we didn't remove Pikachu's chain grab on Falco to, to better that matchup? Or if we don't, like, once you alter one matchup outside of the original game programming, you really should be altering as many of them as you can, which is kind of the whole logic behind projects such as Brawl Plus or Project M, which are great and all. But I mean, in the game we play, some people just have to accept the fact that they're playing mid-tier, low-tier, bottom-tier matchups, and that's just the way it goes. I mean, like same thing with Martha and, uh, and Ness. They have the infinite. It makes it absolutely devastating for Ness. However, even without it, Marth still absolutely craps on Ness. It's still like a negative three matchup. I've talked to other Ness and Marth mains about this. While the infinite sucks, it's kind of like not that much different because they're still going to lose anyway. And the fact that Ice Climbers infinites are legal uh, is just another point bringing up like why do we let them infinite everybody? Uh, Even like the whole point of skill being a factor it really shouldn't be a factor in my opinion. Follow any good Ice Climbers around. I guarantee you within two matches, you'll see them get at least one infinite off. And any good Ice Climbers, such as Lane or sometimes Cheese and High Lane and such, they're going to be getting infinites every single match regardless. It's just what Ice Climbers do. They have setups or grabs. It happens. Why would you let them do infinites and not other characters? You're just picking little tiny matchups in this thousands of matchups that are possible in the game and fixing them while not fixing others. That is a great point, actually, Chibo. That's typically what I hear out of, I mean, people who are pro keeping infinites in the game. And I mean, I'd say we we had a pretty solid discussion. June, what do you think about, oh, we, well, we already talked about the June about infinites, but we should probably move on. I'd, what else? I'd, I'd, I'd kind of disagree with some of the points Chibo made. Like, they, they were good. I'm going to attempt to argue here. I'm not, I'm not necessarily a... Bra- brawl backroom member or what compared to these other guys but um i'll, I'll try um you said day-to-day rapes dk well will beats like every day-to-day like well besides adamus and that was with the infinite like he he beat coney at mlg he beat he consistently beat adamus um yeah so i don't think the matchup per se was that bad before the infinite? If he beat Coney at MLG, I mean the small step was legal there. So uh, well, Coney, Coney, Coney also, did small step. Yeah, Coney didn't small step. Coney and Will agreed. Oh, okay. Uh, they, they had a gentleman's agreement huh, before the set, and I think Coney just agreed not to small step him. And um, what was the uh, something about Pikachu chain grab? Yeah, uh, I mean, Falco's by far worst matchup is uh, Pikachu. I mean, it's kind of debated sometimes if Ice Climbers or Pikachu is worse. However, generally it seems Pikachu is a little bit worse for Falco because his chain grab is fairly devastating on Falco. Mm, yeah, that I, I don't know what to say to that. It's just not – the only Pikachu death would have to fear is Esam because every other Pikachu is at such a lower skill level. But you're you're right. Like if everyone started picking up Pikachu, then Def would have a problem, and you might have Got to a second set. Uh, okay, that's anyway echoing again. The shout out to Pico apparently sucks. I think he's pretty good, but whatever. Oh, shout out to Pika Pika. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, Pika Pika. Does it, does he still play? Yeah, does. Yeah, he does. Oh yeah. Oh. He, Pika Pika's good, but Esam's just <laughs> amazing. I, I, I would like to see a Def versus a Pika. I, if I recall, he he lost a Z some while back. Maybe. Uh, I think he might have. God damn it, Lucas. Okay, so, I mean, I think 
the the main issue though is that we haven't really seen this become an issue and i mean the way i think i would like to approach it is like you said chibo and like we've we talked to az last week is that this rule set is it's really like dynamic and i think i think right now uh it's it's more of an issue for 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 you know making these five or six characters viable again uh and then worrying about it later if if it should become an issue but i sincerely doubt it would become an issue because just to me from a logical i mean from from playing the game uh falco has a absurdly strong keep away game and uh i've definitely seen falco's beat i mean i've seen them beat ice climbers it's not that terrible of a matchup if you ask me and uh i've also seen ice climber i mean uh falco's beat pikachu's simply by playing the runaway game because i mean it's not an issue to me for falco i mean falco can get grabbed but i mean typically when i see falcos get grabbed i mean they would probably in a terrible position already and probably going to die i mean pretty soon anyways uh i mean the same thing with fox and uh and chic stuff i mean to me i've seen i i've heard people say that i mean fox beats zero suit samus and he ha- she has an infinite on him i've heard people i mean i chic doesn't seem that bad to me since he can play the running away game the whole time i mean all these other infinites seem it seems plausible that they're not game breaking although we haven't seen it so far but the ddd one simply because of ddd's enormous grab range and the ease of which you can just press grab down grab down grab down i mean to me that poses more of an issue is that we're making these five or six characters unviable now and then worrying about it later as opposed to making it so these five characters six characters are viable and then looking into it later I agree. I feel like the DDD thing, as much as like we're not seeing every single tournament uh, an abuse of this, I still feel like it's more prevalent because of the fact that DDD actually can do this on more than one character. For one thing, I mean, you go to like uh, you know other matchups, it's you know an infinite on one character on one character. Rather, you have DDD who can do this on a lot of characters, and obviously are can already abuse an amazing grab range on all heavies and a lot of other characters. Um, I mean, is it the is it the worst thing ever? Is it like you know, ice climbers infinite status where every ice climber has to do every match? No, but you know, I feel like it's definitely more prominent that way. And I feel like one of the problems where we have right now is it's three years into the game, and we you know the community doesn't like change. We can we all know this, and I feel like you know people be like, oh well, why would we just? Everybody loves the word arbitrary nowadays. Why would we just arbitrarily? That's a different word, but why would we just arbitrarily, you know, give these guys, you know, a way to be viable again? Just as people are like, oh, why should we give, you know, Gandorf a way to stay alive because, or you know, win the game because he uses a side B and it's weirdly programmed or whatever. You know, I feel like it's worth a try, to be honest. I, you know, what's what's the worst that's going to happen? I really, really doubt that if we ban these infinites and see how it, pa- you know, how it pans out, that DDD is all of a sudden going to be low tier status or something like that. It's not going to change as much, but you could, you know, you could sort of put that on the, you know, the different side here. Like, oh well, if we keep them, is it really going to change much either? We don't know. But I feel like it's worth, I feel like it's worth a shot to maybe sort of see because if anything. It'll hurt, it'll help. If it doesn't, then we can just change it back. I think I think keeping the infinite is gonna hurt because uh, EK players will don't want to go to things. And I don't think it's healthy for attendance. I mean, name one person that doesn't show up to a tournament because DDD can't infinite. I mean, find one person. Uh, good luck. <laughs> but. Will not driving people, for instance, is a problem in my local scene. This is, I don't know, Mech Warrior was this DK, he's a DK player in New York who, like, kind of just started getting decent and made DK. Uh, that's done now. This is, it's not good. If you want to play the attendance game, though, I mean, Wobo had all infinite as legal and. For Will, that was quite a trip. You have to fly out to Texas. You have to get a hotel for multiple days. But he still went. So, I mean, 
I really don't think that's going to stop him so much. I mean, if he likes the game, he's going to keep playing it. If he's still going to lose one matchup, he's still going to lose it. And I mean, if you, if you want to talk about change, which I know uh, you brought up a lot, Rapture, it's the fact that when the game first came out, we saw this. It, it was really mind blowing to just see Day to Day just grabbing this character over and over. We got to ban that. That's what people did. However, I really don't think our meta game has really gotten to experience the infinite's not being banned so i think if we actually let like the rules that kind of go on for a bit with it being legal we might even still see uh dk utilizing certain counterpick stages i know uh like you can even water camp on delfino a little bit which i've seen will do versus adamus to win matches like utilize platforms and areas of stages where you can't get grabbed as easily or just play a really good keep away game it's still possible to win these matches and i think it's just almost like not to say that we've been babying these characters that get infinite, but I mean, perhaps we should, before we make the change, kind of just revert ourselves back to what it was like when Brawl first came out and really test the game well. Kind of like how we said we prematurely banned Pokemon Stadium 2 originally in Atlantic North. Perhaps we prematurely also uh, banned all the various infinites in the game, except for Ice Climbers, because in Melee, Ice Climbers wobbling was more or less legal most of the time. So since we were used to that, we, the rule just kind of carried over. We didn't really test it any other way. Uh, yeah, I would I, I would actually agree with you, Chiba, on some portions there. Uh, and I actually, that is literally my favorite part about this rule set. And what I was telling people, you know, after AZ released this, things got heated and everybody started complaining. And I said, you know what, when we had AZ on the show, he explained this to us and he said that this was going to be a dynamic rule set and that if you wanted to join up to this rules committee and you wanted things to get changed, then you could do that. And it, it, to me, that's actually really healthy. So, I mean, uh, depending on what these people, you know, will vote on eventually, maybe we'll get to see a metagame without – with with the infinite maybe we will we won't even get to see that like by cot five i mean i don't know uh but to me the most important part is that people are all getting their opinions in there we have the top tos in the country getting into this now and to me that's what matters is that we're going to have this dynamic ever-changing rule set with some top minds behind it yep definitely and to wrap this up here because i know it's been such a long night for us and what should be a pretty you know, uh, rapture this up. Uh, that, that's good. You know, Chiba, you're a very funny guy. Um, Thanks. Yes. And, uh, yeah, we'll definitely wrap this up. So, guys, you know, please look out for more information and info on this rule set. I hope you guys have enjoyed our, you know, uh, you know, our, our opinions on this, really. And if you have any comments on our opinions or you want to give opinions on your own please feel free to in the comments section of whatever you're reading this on and you know all of that because we'd love to see how to you know uh, develop this development really look at that look at that sort of putting words together so we're gonna wrap this up or rapture you know All right, everybody, that brings us to the end of Directional Influence episode 28. Uh, first off, I want to give special thanks to VVV Gaming for hosting this show. You guys can check out all of VVV Gaming stuff at vvv-gaming.com, where you can listen to the Losers Bracket, listen to our episodes, read stuff, talk to people, etc. And, of course, they've been hosting us. We're going to give a big shout-out to them. I want to give... Another shout out to Smashboards, all is brawl for letting us do our advertising there. Uh, and you can follow us on those sites, by the way. You, we have threads and blogs on both of those sites, as well as on Twitter, on my Twitter, which is twitter.com backslash VVV Rapture, where I give updates on the show, my life, and all that good stuff. And of course, on Facebook, if you are a member of the Directional Influence group, you get updates on when the episode is releasing both on the wall and as a message to all members message. Uh, and if you aren't a group member, you should just go search it on the Facebook little search bar. Directional Influence will be a group, and you can join up for free. We should we should charge people for that, like a subscription. It seems like terrible advertising. <laughs> that is, but so we're going to keep it for free now. Anyway, um, and of course, I want to give a huge amount of uh, thanks to all of... The special guests here today, Chibo, Junebug, and Inui. So with that said, I want to get the shout-outs, and I'll start with my special guests. So Chibo, what's your special shout-outs for tonight? 
I want to give a shout out to VVV Gaming, of course, uh, my sponsor, the host of this show. They're great. I want to give a shout out to everybody here, Rapture, Punishment Divine, uh, Judebug, and Inui. I want to give a shout out for uh, to Pelka for chatting me up during uh, the podcast. And for everybody else, I'm going to meet this weekend at Mass Madness Legends. I'm going to be there at the tournament this weekend, driving up with Inui and another company. Uh, I'll be tweeting uh, updates about the tournament, so you can follow me at VVV underscore Chibo Senpai dot or not .com, I'm just thinking of websites here. Uh, you can also uh, shout out to COT4, Moneyback, Hot 5 coming up, uh, register at cot5.vgbootcamp.com, and uh, shout out to all of our listeners that make the show possible. Awesome. And Junebug, what about you? Ah. Uh, hmm. <laughs> well. Shout out to Refreshment. <laughs> shout outs to Refreshment. Um, ah. <laughs> shout out shout outs to everyone who's supported me all my friends my crew aqua teen hunger force uh njny uh vinny zuko malcolm all those cool people um uh i don't i'm probably forgetting people so shout outs to everyone all right cool and finally but not last but not least oh no yeah anyway what's up <laughs> Adamus, like a brother to me, even though uh, we sometimes fight like two, two. and the uh, host, every single host in this community, the lifeblood, the murderers, and the friends happen. All the hosts. Oh. All the hosts. Yep, we put in all to make this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we put in all the work, like Alex Strife, uh, Zyro, Chibo, Kitaro, Definitely, definitely. And uh, Matt, what about you? Since we're going on the shout-outs thing here. Oh uh, well, I'll I'll do. God damn it, Lucas. I'll do <laughs> I'll do one of our shout-outs together because uh, shout-outs to Lila, who is uh, anyway in our our friend from an old Fire Emblem forum, and she is actually making her way to Genesis this year just to see us because we're that awesome. So shout-outs to her. Uh, I can't believe you brought up Lila. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, shout out to all you guys who made it through this long, super serious episode that has been not super serious at times. Yes. Uh, I want to give shout outs to. Uh, I don't even know. I'm just so tired. Uh, I guess I want to give shout outs to everybody who listened to the show. And have been supporting us since day one, back in August, which was on, like, a controller spike back in the day. Um, I want to give shout-outs to my man No Water from VVV. Gears 3 beta is coming up, so we're going to rape. Uh, team Rapture's going. If anyone wants to join a Gears 3 beta team, get the fuck on there. Uh, team Rapture's the best. We're going to be the best Gears team ever. And um, I guess shouts to New England for hosting tournaments when I'm never there. So because apparently every time I leave the state, uh, New England hosts a good tournament. So shout outs to any. And with that said, uh, I want you guys, I, I want all of you guys listening to give yourselves a pat on the back for sticking with us this long. And I really yes. appreciate yes. And how, how long was this thing? This we've how? been doing this since August of. Last How year, long? no, this thing was like, like an this hour. Episode? Oh, this was oh, like an hour and a half. This hour, solid hour, hour quality episode. Hour. So, <laughs> yeah, quality we have a lot. Episode. This will always be and, edited uh, a little bit. This episode is gonna steamroll your hard drive. Steamroll. Yeah, if people steam actually roll. listen to the entire <laughs> hour, I'll be impressed. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> hopefully, you guys, you guys listen to this while you were, you were, you were taking your showers or driving in your cars or. I wish I could listen to podcasts in my shower. That'd be sick. You could put them on your iPod and you play them in the shower. How do you do that? <laughs> Wouldn't the iPod get I, wet? Uh, nothing. Never mind. It would get anyway, wet pod. Um, as we tell you guys every week, uh, you can leave us comments on all of the social networking places that Rapture told you. And we appreciate comments, and especially after this episode. Uh, yeah. Because uh, this is a pretty this is a pretty good episode. So and I'm just afraid mean, Awesome. So, <laughs> while uh, Rapture's bowels are steamrolling. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to end the show here. <laughs> we're going to end the show. Uh, 
<laughs> yes, thanks for listening. This is Directional Influence, episode 28. Episode 29 is coming up next week. Shoutouts to Pelka. Pelka, hit me up. You're getting on the show next week. Uh, so, yeah, that's episode 29, but this week is episode 28. Thank you for listening. We'll join you guys next week on Directional Influence. Peace. <laughs>